let's talk about what is a company. A company is an entity that is created which is different from its members. So five people might get together and start a company. The company becomes an entity that of its own and the members may own different amounts of shares in the company. The shares in the company represent their stake in the company. When the company is authorized by the government or is legalized, it becomes a corporation. It's different from a partnership. A partnership is where two people agree to do something together and are working together on something. A partnership is not the same thing as a company, which is its own entity. A partnership is more of an agreement. So, and a corporation, as I just said, is a legal version of a company. So, within a company, you can define the shares which are actually given out and the shares which are available to be given out. For example, you might split the company into 100 shares. You can have five members, each of whom have 10 shares each. So the allocated shares are 10 to each person, and then 50 more shares are authorized but not actually given out to any person in the company just yet. There are many different laws and legal regulations around different types of companies, such as limited liability companies, S-Corps, C-Corps, and so on. They determine the kind of tax rules that your company has to follow, the amount of liability your company has in case of bankruptcy or not being able to pay its bills or debts. And the naming and the rules may differ by country and by state. For example, in the United States, I might open a limited liability company, whereas in India, I might open a private limited company, both having limited liability. So opening a company may have different amounts of requirements and legal responsibilities associated with depending on where you open or register the company. In some places, such as Delaware, it's relatively easy to open a company through an agent. Although if you live in California, you also have to pay a foreign entity tax despite the fact that your company is actually registered in Delaware. You can have companies that own other companies or companies that own shares in other corporations. For example, in my own business, I have a company in India and a company in the United States with the company in the United States owning shares in the company in India. So you can create complex structures internationally and nationally uh, between your own companies or company other companies. Uh, I would advise most people to get a lawyer when handling various situations and also an accountant who can make sure that all of your finances and things are recorded properly based on the GAAP, general accounting principles, as accepted in the location where you're building your company. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit better about companies. We talked a little bit about limited liability companies. Uh, S-Corps are sole proprietorships wh where an individual has all liability and responsibility of that company. A C-Corp is more of a corporation uh, with more requirements for filing taxes and being more official about everything. In a C-Corp, it's called shares or uh, shares are called stocks 
whereas in an LLC or limited liability companies, uh, they're called uh, the shareholders are called members. And instead of uh, stocks, we call them membership certificates. So there are certain differences like that uh, between the different types of companies that you might open. And hopefully that helps you understand which kind of company you want to open. If you're going to open something alongside with your job, you probably want to open a limited liability company. Whereas if you're opening something full time where you're getting a lot of investment from outside investors and in very quickly you're going to grow into something much larger, you might want to just start out opening a C-Corp. Also, when you grow very big, such as $100 million or more, and you can no longer get your investments from uh, individual angel investors or venture capitalists, and you're ready to go out to the public to get investments, you have to register with the SEC and turn it into a public company. And public companies typically have a lot more requirements for disclosing their financials, for disclosing their practices, and so on. Because anybody and everybody can then invest in that company. It's illegal to go and get money from the general public before you fulfill those requirements. And you must go to someone or some people known as accredited investors which in the United States are typically people with net worth of more than $1 million or sophisticated investors who have the ability to do due intelligence and due diligence and be able to understand exactly what your business model is, how it's going to make money, how it's going to make profit. And they invest with a very aware mind and understanding of the potential losses in doing so. So more about the types of investors in another video. But hopefully this gets you a start to the different types of companies that are available as options for creating as you pursue your entrepreneurial venture.